Today I'm going to show you how to replace the battery on an iPod video. This tutorial is the same for the 60 and 80 gigabyte models, though today we have a 30 gig and hello there. So first of all, we need tools. I highly recommend using an Icesmo or a metal opening tool. I will put this link in the description. That's where I get mine. Some of you may attempt this repair using the blue plastic tools. I'd highly recommend against it. These are very cheap, very accessible, and they will make your life a whole lot easier. First of all, we're going to go ahead and lock the iPod. Take the Icesmo. We're going to start on this side. Very important to start on this side, not this side. Headphone jack flex lies here. You run the risk of ripping it if you start on that side. We're gonna take the ISSMO, get in between the metal and the plastic. What we're gonna do, not pry up from here, is push inside the iPod as if I'm pushing that way. Push all the way down, you can feel a bottom out, and then pull up. What we did there is we got underneath the mid frame. And close it up again. All right. So it's in. What I'm gonna do is push inside the iPod and it's bottomed out and I'm going to lift up. And as you can see, the iPod is open. Put the iPod face down, lift it up, take the battery, gently pull it out. A lot of tutorials recommend lifting up this brown latch right here. I highly recommend against using this brown latch. It's very easy to apply too much pressure with an opening tool on that and break it. It's 15 years old, it's cheap plastic, it's very brittle, bad combination. I'll show you an example. I can show you, here's a scrap motherboard. As you can see this brown latch. Now it's very easy to take this brown latch, lift it up and take it off the board. Oh, where did that go? That flew somewhere. I will never find that, hold on. Anyways, what you're gonna wanna do from here, take the hard drive, move it, undo that latch. For example, I'll show you guys one more time here. So this latch comes up very, very easily. Uh, there's no click to it. It feels almost kind of loose. Just get your fingernail under it, focus, and lift it up just like that. Anyways, now that we have the back plate, what you're gonna want is a pair of tweezers or one of these tools. I'm not too sure what they're called. What we need is the blunt end. So what you're gonna wanna do, get the tweezers in just right there. Take your thumb, put it right here on the headphone jack flex and gently pull up. And as you pull up, what you're gonna wanna do, hold down on the headphone jack flex and lift up the battery. Now, it's very easy to take this battery Go like this and have the adhesive stick to the headphone jack flex and rip it right about there. It's very, very easy. This I've obviously been in already. It's an aftermarket battery, aftermarket headphone jack flex. I've got some originals. This one is from my previous video. I'm gonna take blunt end, go like that, hold down right there. And as we pry up, take the battery gently and make sure that that flex does not get ripped. Try another one here. Just like that, hold down. It's up on that side, yes. There you go. So I recommend taking your time with it, making sure you have your thumb on that flex right there. So when it comes to installing a new battery in your back plate. Common battery, these peel off the adhesive seal. You may need to take this part of the headphone jack flex and move it like such so it doesn't get in the way. You don't want to install the battery on top of that and go ahead and place it right there. Give it a nice press, push it up a little bit maybe, and it's all good. Now, some of you may have a battery like this these do not have adhesive and you will likely need adhesive to install this correctly. As you can see, I've got some aftermarket adhesive, got some red tape, put a layer down, go ahead, pop it in there. Make sure that is to the side. Go ahead and press it down nice and easy. Perfect. We're going to prepare for reassembly. While you have the back plate, it's very important to check each one of your clips and make sure they are not bent upwards like the clips on this, that one that one. If they are bent, take the blunt end and press them back down. Otherwise, the iPod will not close correctly. Now, finally, when you open this iPod, you used a tool to get in. You expanded the metal a little bit. It's good practice always to take the back plate before reinstalling it. I take it in my hand like this and I squeeze it just to ensure that if I did bend the back plate out and make it wider, that it's back to its normal form and it will snap on, not be loose. Here we go. I'm going to take our headphone jack flex. 
with the headphone jack flex, lift up that latch just like that, latch is down, lift it up, insert it like so. Always be sure to have the hold switch toggled, like your hard drive. You didn't need to unplug it, I just did that for demonstration of some of the steps. So, what you're gonna wanna do, have your iPod like such, take this and put it in there. Press down, it does not take very much force at all. Really, you do not need to lift up the clip. Done some 5,000 iPods at this point, never needed to lift up the clip. And then take your back plate and give it a nice squeeze. Have to go all the way around. And there you go. That's how you replace the battery on an iPod video.